get him. Nice. Good morning. My name is Ryan Dice. I'm the co-founder and CEO of digitalmarketer.com. And today what I want to do is give you a framework where if you are just starting a company, how many of you are, you have a startup or you're with a startup, so a new company? Let me see some hands. Very cool. So if you have that, I want to give you a framework for defining your brand. And if you're with a legacy company, so how many of you are with like a really old, boring legacy company? Don't raise your hand. That's just mean. That's hateful. Your boss may be sitting next to you. No, but if you're there, I want to give you a framework for um, maybe recapturing some of that magic uh, that, that, that was there and should be there. Because I'm telling you, if you're at a company that exists today, there is some magic, there is some spark there that can absolutely be reclaimed. So long story short, we're gonna be talking about branding, but maybe branding in a way that you've never seen it before. And I hope by the time we're done, you agree with me that this is really about more than branding. So let's get this, uh, let's get this thing started. We're gonna start off talking about hypergrowth. There we go, character diamonds. All right, we're gonna talk about character diamonds. So, Kind of open up, I want to just pose some questions. Don't yell out the answer right now. We'll, we'll kind of answer some of these as we move forward, but why is Apple loved more than Dell? What is it about Apple that makes people love Apple more than Dell? Now, I'm from Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm a resident. I, I went to school at the University of Texas at Austin. I was inspired to start my very first business from my college dorm room by Michael Dell because he had done the same thing literally in the dorm room across the street from where I was living at the time when I started my first company in 1999. So it pains me to say this, but that's the reality, right? Apple is more loved than Dell. Similarly, how was Stan Lee able to beat DC Comics? Now, if you're not a comic book nerd, like I am, we got any comic book nerds? And the audience, yeah, come on, come on. Some of you look, if you're a nerd, you might as well be a comic book nerd, right? If you don't know, back, go back into this, in the 1960s, right, DC Comics was they were the king. They were the King Kong of all comics. They, they had Superman, they had Batman, and then kind of out of nowhere comes Marvel Comics and some of these amazing characters like Spider-Man and X-Men and really kind of took over the scene. How does that happen? What can we learn from that? And also, why are these cows standing? Why are these cows standing? And how does a company that is only open six days a week sell more chicken than any other company on planet Earth? There's something that we can all learn there as well. Um, so we're gonna talk about branding, and really I gotta give credit where credit's due. Uh, our host, our illustrious host, uh, Mr. David Cancel, I love what he had to say about brand. He said, companies can no longer differentiate on features in a world of infinite supply. Brand, brand is the only true marketing advantage. In a world of infinite supply, in a world where everyone can be a taxi driver, in a world where everyone can be a hotel, in a world where with a matter of clicks you can have almost anything you want on your, on your doorstep in a day or less, brand is the true differentiator. It is the one advantage that we have. So we're beginning to agree that brand is important. Really for the first time in a long time, branding is once again cool. I think we're, we're realizing that it's important. But what is branding? When we say branding, what do we mean by that? I love this quote from Jeff Bezos, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. I love that quote, your brand is what other people say about you when you are not in the room. So if we can agree that branding is important, if we can agree kind of what branding is, that's good, that's a good start. The problem is that nobody's telling us how do we do it? How do you today create a brand that is more than just a logo? How do you create a brand that isn't just a soulless mass of people with a product to sell? How do you do that? That's kind of the question that I, that I would like to, to address in the time that we have today. Well, what I'm seeing happening a lot, kind of one end of the spectrum, is this disease impacting a lot of, of, of startups, and, and it's this, uh, affliction known as guruitis. You've probably seen this. It usually starts with a, with a founder. They do a post on Medium. It gets some traction, and next thing you know, they think they're the next Tony Robbins. They're doing you know, events, user conferences. They're spreading out, like having their people do firewalks and chants. And before too long, you kind of forget what the heck the company does. It's all about the founder, right? It's all about the founder. So that extreme isn't ideal. That extreme is not necessarily going to scale. That extreme is, is not going to place the value where it needs to be, which is at the company level. But hey, no one can, can deny that, that it has a soul, 
no one can deny that it's at least interesting. But if we're going to acknowledge that maybe that extreme isn't ideal, uh, we kind of have to acknowledge that the alternative extreme isn't ideal either. And I want you to watch this because I think it kind of paints a pretty clear picture uh, about why it's not ideal. I've been driving a Lincoln since long before anybody paid me to drive one. I didn't do it to be cool. I didn't do it to make a statement. I just liked it. Okay, that's adorable. But seriously, what the heck? Why is Matthew McConaughey driving a Lincoln? Now, don't get me wrong. I loves me some McConaughey, right? Another Austin guy. He's basically the coolest person on planet Earth, right? You know, genie pops out of a bottle. You could have any wish. I want to be Matthew McConaughey. I don't think like it's asking for too much. But does anybody really believe that, right? Does anybody really believe that? But why does it happen, right? Why does it happen? Why do these big companies do things like this, I submit to you that it's because they have no soul. Because these big companies, because these big brands have no soul, they have no choice but to co-opt the soul, the character of someone who does. And so they grasp hold of a McConaughey. And nine times out of 10, when companies hire celebrity spokespeople, that's exactly what they're doing. They're saying, well, we have no soul, we have no personality, let's borrow theirs for a little while and they wonder why it doesn't work. So that extreme doesn't work either. And this kind of is where the, the whole branding paradox, I think, comes up. The idea of a brand is, for a brand to truly scale, it must abandon the face of its founder, right? If a brand is going to scale, it kind of has, has to push aside the face of its founder, and yet at the same time, faceless brands are boring and inhuman. So how do we bridge this divide? How do we stand in the center uh, of these two seemingly, uh, you know, in squeezable, in inconsqueezable, I think is the word, is the verb that I'm looking for. There's a different one, but inconsqueezable you got right now. They can't be squeezed together. How do we squeeze them together? That's what I want to offer you today. So when it comes to the solution, more and more what I, what I hear are folks saying, the key is that brands must be storytellers. How many of you have heard that? Brands need to get a better, and marketers in particular, storytelling is the best marketing. Now, I don't disagree with the statement. I just think, I think it's a great start, but I think that it's incomplete. I think it's incomplete. So here's a writer downer for you. While humans love a good story, I submit to you that it is characters that we crave. While humans love a good story, it is characters that we crave. If you really think about it, there's only been two or three stories ever in the history of human existence. What is the key differentiator? The characters. The stories don't change. It's all hero's journey. It's all two people falling in love. What is the differentiator? In a world of infinite supply, it's the characters that make the difference. You'll recognize these characters, many of these characters you love. They might be some of your favorites. The funny thing is, you've probably forgotten the plot line of many of the movies, but I bet you could quote some of your favorite lines of the characters. I bet you could make your voice sound like theirs. I bet you could walk like they walk, right? It's funny, Pixar and Disney, they're known as a storytelling brand, but the reality is all the stories are the same. It's the characters that we remember. At the end of the day, it's the characters that we remember. It's the characters that we latch onto. So a brand is not a logo. A brand is not your style guide. These are things that we do for the sake of consistency. I'm not saying that they aren't important. I'm just saying they are not brand. A brand is a fictional character. If you want a definition of a brand, I believe that a brand is a fictional character. It is a character. So the question, if we could acknowledge that, okay, branding is important, branding and is character creation, we have to ask ourselves then, how are characters made? How do characters come into existence? And the beautiful thing is, this is not a new idea. This is not a new concept. We as marketers, as founders, we don't have to wonder because they've already figured it out. Do we have any screenwriters in the room? Anybody go to college to learn screenwriting or fiction writing? I will tell you this, I wish more marketers took screenwriting classes. I'm all, I, I love studying the greats, the Ogilvies, right, the John Capels, I love studying the great 
copywriters, where you want to go next is screenwriting. Get good at writing dialogue. Get good at creating characters. If you did take a screenwriting class, there's a really good chance that you'd be taught this concept of a character diamond. Character, diamond are, character diamonds are how fictional characters are created. They are plotted in a diamond like the one that you see here. And it's loosely kind of, I'm mega simplifying it. I like to say like, I'm, I'm rednecking it a little bit. That's what we do down in Texas. Like, let's just redneck it and make it simple. So at the top, that's the North Star. All right, now I don't mean North Star like the way a lot of growth hackers mean North Star, nor, not North Star for the company. What I mean by North Star is this is the most obvious and visible character trait. This is your brand's mutant power. What is your brand's mutant power? So, if it's Superman, it's Man of Steel, flies around, laser beams out of the eyeballs, bullets bouncing off, boo boo right? Got it. If it's Spider-Man, it's like web-slinging. Let's think about another interesting character, um, Sherlock Holmes. Got any Sherlock Holmes fans? Sherlock Holmes is a, is a genius. He's a savant, right? He's a savant. Right, so this, you shouldn't have to think about it very hard, but, think, but do think about it. What is your brand's most obvious mutant power? As we're plotting the character diamond, remember, north and south is external. When we get to the east and west axis, that's going to be internal. We'll come back to that. So what are the external character traits? North star. Now what we need to do is we need to balance that. We need to balance the north star with a counter star. This is a secondary character trait that balances out the primary. So. What is Superman's counter star? Kryptonite, thank you. Superman's counter star is kryptonite. You have a mutant power, you have a kryptonite. Um, when we get into Spider-Man, right? Spider-Man, funny enough, called Spider-Man, but what actually was Spider-Man? A teenage boy, a scared little teenage boy. That character incidentally comes up a lot. Harry Potter, wizard who's a child. We start to see these characters repeat again and again and again. There's a lesson there, all right? Uh, when we think Sherlock Holmes, this one's kind of funny. Savant-like genius, kind of an asshole, right? Just kind of an antisocial prick, right? But it sort of balances out. It, it, it makes it interesting. What we're looking for is we're looking for conflict. We're looking for contrast at the poles. Contrast at the poles, that's what builds interest. Contrast, conflict, that is what creates interest. Let's go over to this side. Now what we need to plot is what is your non-negotiable. People will not trust you until they know what you believe. People will not trust your brand until they know where your brand stands. Where do you stand on particular items? It's funny, you probably have friends who disagree with you and you disagree with them vehemently over different matters. Could be political, could be religious, and yet still you're friends with them. We can be friends with people we disagree with, we just want them to be consistent. So what is the hill that your brand is prepared to die on? For Superman, truth, justice, and the American way. For Spider-Man, protection of the innocents, right? You got a school bus full of kids over here, you got the woman he loves over here, and it's like, ah! Right, even in his own thing, right? It's every single one of them. It's the same thing, he mu the innocence must be protected. For Sherlock Holmes, the puzzle must be solved. It's not about justice, it's about solving the puzzle. Incidentally, any, any of you watched the TV show House when that was on? You realize that's just Sherlock Holmes put in a hospital, right? They weren't even trying to hide it. House, Holmes, Wilson, Watson, same character. Same character. This happens again and again and again. Winning characters re-emerge in different scenes again and again and again. Watch for it. There's only so many characters just like there are only so many stories. Now here's the biggie though. This is the one that most people mess up. You got a mutant power, you got a kryptonite, you got a non-negotiable, a hill you're prepared to die on. This is the one where most of them mess up and that is what is your quirk, your mask, your weakness, your flaw. It is not the things that we are exceptional at that make us human. It is our flaws that make us human. How was Stan Lee able to come out of nowhere, along with Marvel, and beat DC Comics? He created characters that were human. Spider-Man harbored incredible, intense guilt over the death of his uncle that he allowed happen because he let the bad guy get away. Right? Now the funny thing is, Superman, prior to about the 1970s, 1980s, didn't really have a weakness, an internal weakness or flaw. The only thing he had was kryptonite. 
But any of you who are fans who are old enough to have watched the Christopher Reeves version that came out in the 80s, what was Spider-Man, I'm sorry, what was Superman's quirk, weakness, flaw? You know what it was? He was bad, bad at, with women. They just made him kind of a nerd. That was his weakness or flaw. That was what made him human. As Clark Kent, he was just kind of derpy, right? That didn't show up until screenwriters got their hands on this character. Batman. What happened with Batman later, later on? If you watch the new ones, The Dark Knight, right? All of a sudden, he's this kind of psycho vigilante where you're mega questioning his motives. That was new. That's because DC learned a thing or two from Stan Lee. I asked before if we had any Sherlock Holmes fans, a bunch of hands went up. What's Sherlock Holmes' weakness, mask, flaw? When he wasn't solving a case, where could he be found? In the opium dens. And if you look at the modern Sherlock Holmes, he's on different, like, methamphetamines. If you look at House, he's on prescription pills. Sherlock Holmes is always a drug addict. You take the drugs away from Sherlock Holmes, and he's just kind of a jerk. We don't like him. We don't want him to win. We don't root for that Sherlock Holmes. What is your weakness, mask, flaw? I want to show you an example, of, and, and I'll show you how we did this at my own company. Now, this is not something that I normally talk about publicly. It's something that, in fact, I never talk about publicly. Normally, the only way that you would see this is as a new team member being onboarded. So we do include our character diamond as an aspect of, the, of our team onboarding. I hope that you will, too, by the time that we're done. But this is us at Digital Marketer. So what is our primary character trait? We're marketing savants. We're really good at this marketing stuff. But that's not enough. Like that, there's more to that. You see, it used to be that Digital Marketer, we, would, we were all, always publishing our split test results. We were always publishing our data. When we decided, no, 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 we're, we're savants, we stopped doing that. It doesn't mean that we stopped testing. We still test all the time. But savants don't show their work. Savants don't justify their position with data. They say it, they declare it, it simply is. You can agree with them or not, they don't care. You can see how this begins to alter every little decision that you're gonna make. We need character consistent, consistency throughout the plot line that is your company's development. What about the Counterstar? Unlike the brooding savant of Sherlock Holmes, we're joyful, we're irreverent. We're kind of the idiot savant. And we are, you could probably tell, right? You're around me any only time, you're like, that guy's kind of a dork. You'd be right, right? That's our whole company, we're all kind of goofy. Right? We're, we're irreverent. We're having fun. We're childlike. What's the hill we're prepared to die on? It must be proven. It must be step by step. At Digital Marketer, we do not publish theories. We do not say, well, we think that this might work. We also never break news. Facebook can come out with a completely new ad format, ad type. You will not read about it first on the Digital Marketer blog. We'll let somebody else do that. We'll be a week, two weeks later saying, yeah, yeah, remember that thing that came out? Here's how you actually do that. Here's how you take advantage of it. Must be proven, must be step by step. We abhor theory, all right? We say theory is for posers. And our flaw is, frankly, we're a bunch of screw-ups. We make a lot of mistakes. Now, it used to be we would hide our mistakes. It used to be when we make a mistake, we're like, let's not talk about that one. The reality is if you're any good at marketing, you're gonna be right 30, 40% of the time if you're amazing. You know what that means? That means you're wrong 60, 70% of the time. We talk about that. And you know what? Our subscribers learn more from our mistakes than they do our wins. They appreciate it more. They say, wow, you just seem so down to earth. What are they really saying when we say the word down to earth? What's down to earth? Humans. Humans, that's us. That's all of us. We're down on the earth, not floating around up there. We're not angelic beings. You just seem so down to earth. Yeah. It is because of this. So I want to ask you, and it's what I recommend that you do. After you plot, say, what characters from books, film, does this kind of mask? So if I were to say, you got a savant-like character who's joyful and irreverent, very regimented, very step-by-step, -step, who also makes a lot of mistakes. Does that bring to mind any characters from film that you can think of? Let me narrow it. Film in the 90s. So for a lot of you, you don't remember the 90s because you weren't born in those but I see enough gray hair out there that you remember the 90s, come on. Can anybody think of a film that had a character like this? Digital Marketer is Forrest Gump. Digital Marketer, my company, is Forrest Gump. Yes, savants, 
But we're also the, you know, jokers who are waving as we like fall off the boat and it crashes into the thing, right? We're, we're, we're silly, we're joyful, we're having fun. Very regimented gump. Why did you put that weapon together so quickly? Because you told me to, drill sergeant, right? And yes, my VP of marketing one year did in fact, while on stage, say, oh my gosh, I got a pee, and then ran off stage. People said, are you mad? Uh-uh, that's perfect. Because just like Forrest Gump said to JFK, I got to pay. Uh-huh. Sorry I ruined your Black Panther party, right? We're impulsive. We screw up a lot. So digital marketer is Forrest Gump. Who is your brand's character? Who is your brand's character? Now, why does this matter? This is the key to scaling without soul. If anybody from Dell is watching, it is not too late. But if you want to know why Apple succeeded, where Dell did not, it's because the character that of Steve Jobs was infused into that brand such that it was able to live beyond him. And if Apple fails and flounders, it will be because they forgot that. It's because they lost that magic. But it's there. Incidentally, Steve Jobs, a little bit, if you want to plot a character on there, kind of a little bit, um, Sherlock Holmesy. What's their flaw? They're kind of jerk faces, right? Perfectionists to the point of, of kind of pissing everybody off, right? But it's there and we love them for it. But Dell, it's not too late. This is also the key to standing out in a world of infinite supply. Nobody's writing new stories anymore. The stories have all been written. The only thing that's ever being produced now are new characters. What about your business? What's the new character that is going to be your brand? It's also how you engender loyalty, and I mean real loyalty. If you have children and you've taken those children to Disney World, you've seen how quickly they will leave you in the dust to go and hug a princess. I remember watching like Bring My Girls like, yay, we're at Disney World, and they see like Cinderella, and they're like, Pff, and they're like, oh, I'm just sitting there like, I wish they loved me like that. Characters have that effect on us. Characters have that effect on us. You want to build real loyalty, create a character. Now, there are only two ways to screw this up. The first way is to not do it at all. The second way is to be namby-pamby on the weakness part. And I will tell you, your customers won't trust you until they know who you are, warts and all. If you want to mess this up, act like you're perfect. If you want to mess this up, pretend like you're bigger than your customers. If you want to mess this up, forget that you're a human being. So now it's your turn. Feel free to take a picture of this if you like, or you can just go to a whiteboard and draw a diamond. It's not, this is a remarkably simple worksheet, but I do encourage you, take some time on the break if you're here with your team, take some time, plot your brand's character diamond. My name is Ryan Dice, that's where you can find me. I would love, love, love to hang out with you on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you so very much for your time. Killed it. Love it.